hallucinations or experiences that people have in which they see things that aren't there or they hear things that aren't there. It's a perception of something within one of your special senses, vision, hearing, taste, smell, and feeling things on your skin uh, that are coming from your brain and not from the outside world. In Parkinson patients, as a result of medications, hallucinations are unfortunately rather common. In about 30 percent, that's almost one-third of Parkinson patients who take medications for their motor symptoms will experience some type of hallucination. The most common sort of hallucination is visual. People see things that aren't there, but they may hear things, they may feel things on their skin like animals crawling on their skin, or they may smell things. And it's important for patients to understand that this is a common complication of their medications because if they're unaware of it and they start seeing things that other people don't see, they start to think they're going crazy rather than thinking this is a medication side effect. The hallucinations that occur in Parkinson's disease are very different than the hallucinations that occur in psychiatric disorders like schizophrenia or major depression or manic depression. In those disorders, hallucinations are typically auditory rather than visual. And in those disorders, the hallucinations that they hear are generally voices, and the voices are usually saying nasty things about them, that they're ugly, they smell bad, they're dressed poorly, people hate them. Uh, whereas in Parkinson's disease, as I already said, hallucinations are typically visual, and they generally have no emotional sort of content. People see other people. They're standing around. They're watching television. They're playing card games. They often see children. And it's quite common for Parkinson patients to see people or animals that are much smaller than they are in reality. So they may see things that are uh, like cartoon characters, perhaps, uh, people living in their potted plants. Um, and in times, the hallucinations can actually be somewhat entertaining. And the hallucinations are pretty stereotypic from one person to another. They see people. They see children playing. And generally, these hallucinations don't pay any attention to the person. So the person will notice a boy sitting on the sofa watching television while they're watching television. And they'll ask the boy what he's doing there, and the boy just ignores them. And then they start getting a little angry, and they go to the child, and it disappears. Then they realize this is a hallucination. If they're warned about this as a possibility in advance, then it's kind of a remarkable, unusual sort of thing. But they don't panic. They don't go to the emergency room. They don't do anything like that. So it's important for patients to understand that. Um, the hallucinations usually last seconds to minutes. They go away when people approach them. Um, and usually they're not very disturbing. But it's always disturbing to patients to know that their reality is different than the reality of other people. And it may make them question at times whether things that they're seeing are really there or whether they may be hallucinations. Almost always they can tell the difference. But sometimes when these become rather vivid and frequent, that can be difficult. And while most of these hallucinations are relatively benign, uh, people can be disturbed by them. If they wake up at night, and the hallucinations are typically more common at night, they may see a strange man standing next to their bed, for example. And even though he doesn't have a knife or a gun and look like he's about to murder them, it's nevertheless disturbing, I think, for anybody to wake up and find a stranger in their room looking at them. Or they may see that there are three people in the bathroom when they want to go to the bathroom. That can be very disturbing. And sometimes, because these seem so real and they can be very frightening, uh, people will call the police or they'll call their 
family or friends, and that leads to a series of problems that are partly embarrassing and certainly very disturbing for the family, uh, having to worry about what might happen next. So it's very important to recognize these problems when they occur and discuss them with the doctor. Because on the one hand, it is very helpful for the patient to be reassured that this is a common sort of complication of the medicines. And more importantly, it's important for the patient to understand that they're not going crazy. This is a common side effect. It's also important for the doctor to know about it, partly because patients are often bothered by them, and there usually are treatments that can make them better. Um, but it's also a warning sign, because if a patient is having hallucinations now, even if they're mildly, very mild, you know, they see you know, a child uh, you know, three times a week, they're there for two or three minutes, and then they disappear, it's no big deal. Nevertheless, if they come to the office saying, you know, my tremor is worse, my walking is worse, I'm having more trouble, by knowing about the presence of hallucinations already, the doctor knows that if the medicine is further increased to try to improve motor function, there's a very good chance those hallucinations are going to get worse. And so it becomes an important thing to take into account whenever we make the judgment as to benefits versus risk, because in the case where hallucination is already present, the risk becomes much higher than when you raise medicine. There will be more side effects. The hallucinations, as I mentioned, are related to the medications. And unlike many drug complications, it may occur even if the medications haven't changed in a long time. So it's very easy for patients to recognize this is a drug complication. If the doctor starts a new medicine and two days later they start having hallucinations, it's very easy to put that together. But it's not so easy to put together if your medicines have remained the same for the last three years and all of a sudden you start having this problem. And we believe the reason that that occurs is that although the medications have remained the same, the disease has slowly worsened and of course the person has aged a little bit. And as we age, our brain shrinks. And as people age, their Parkinson's gets slowly worse. So they become more sensitive to the drug side effects. I mentioned before that the hallucinations are mostly visual, which is true. And the hallucinations that a person gets tends, in general, to be the same each time. So they may see the same three people, you know, one wearing a, a cowboy hat, another wearing uh, boots, another one wearing some funny costume. And they'll usually be the same three people dressed in the same way, appearing in the same place each time. Um, so they, they, they don't become exactly welcome guests, but they become recognized guests so that the person doesn't panic. I mentioned before also that when people do panic, they may call the police. Probably more common uh, is it for a person to say, say a man to his wife, to put out some food for the child who's been visiting, when of course there's no child there at all. Hallucinations are different than illusions. Illusions are distortions of something that you see. So you see a flower, for example, and you start to see a face in the flower, and the flower becomes real, or it looks very real. That's an illusion. It's a distortion. It's fairly common, for example, when people are driving, that at a distance they may mistake something like a fire hydrant for a boy walk, about to walk across the street. Um, and that's, to us as, a do as doctors, is, is less disturbing. Um, and those don't always necessarily change into hallucinations where people see things. There are certain important aspects of hallucination. The first one I mentioned already was that it's important to know this is a, usually a medication side effect. You're not going crazy. And the third is the, that the warning sign about increasing medicine. But it's important also to understand that these usually can be treated. Um, since these are usually medication effects, uh, it's important to review all the medications. It's not just the medicines for Parkinson's disease that contribute to this. 
but very often people are on medications, particularly medications used to treat overactive bladder. Those may frequently cause hallucinations or at least contribute to them, and many patients will have hallucinations go away if their other medications are adjusted. When that doesn't work, it's often possible to reduce some of the Parkinson medicines or reduce one that's more likely to cause hallucinations while increasing another that's less likely to do that. Uh, but all the medications used for Parkinson's may contribute to the development of hallucinations. Nevertheless, they usually can be reduced and reduce the hallucinations or make them go away entirely. When that's not possible because a reduction in the Parkinson medicine will result in increased immobility that's just not tolerable, there are medications that can be used to make the hallucinations better or go away. There are two antipsychotic medications that are typically used. One is a medication called quetiapine, the other is clozapine. And there's a new medication that was just approved in the United States for treating hallucinations in Parkinson's disease that is commercially available in the United States and hopefully around the world within the next few years.